A retired police officer has been shot dead by terrorists in Jammu and Kashmir's Baramula district this morning. The incident taking place when the retired senior superintendent of police, identified as Mohammad Shafi, was praying at a mosque in the city's Gantmula, Baramula area. After the incident, the police cordoned off the area. Several targeted killings have taken place in Jammu and Kashmir in the recent past. Earlier this month, a police constable was shot at and injured by terrorists in Srinagar. Well, the constable identified as Mohammad Hafiz Shad was attacked near his house at Hamdaniya Colony, Bemina. Before this, in October, a police inspector identified as Masroor Ahmed Vani was attacked outside his house at Eidgah while he was playing cricket. The officer was being treated in Srinagar's Paris Hospital and was later shifted to Ames in the national capital where he succumbed to his injuries. A massive search operation, meanwhile, continues to nab terrorists in the forest area of Deraki Gali in the Poonch sector after four army soldiers were killed by terrorists in an encounter. The Indian Army foiled an infiltration bid, meanwhile, as well in Akhnur. Major Nalek Sivaj, former head of Territorial Army, is joining us live. We also have Major Nal Sudhakarji, strategic affairs expert, live with us. Group Captain UK Devnath, a defence expert, also joins us live. Let me uh, begin with you first, uh, Major Nal Sivaj, on uh, you know, even as on a day when the nation pays tributes to our brave hearts who lost their lives in Poonch, uh, another incident, another attack taking place today. Very correct. Today, no doubt about it. As far as uh, the operation which is going in a punch, I am sure that within uh, another two, three days, we'll be able to eliminate those three to four terrorists who were responsible for laying ambush uh, into our soldiers. At the same time, this incident which have taken place in uh, Baramulla, uh, where unfortunately it was a targeted attack, uh, SSP who was retired has been killed. Uh, as far as Kashmir Valley is concerned, uh, these are far and few um, incident. It really does not make much difference to the prevailing situation. Uh, as far as Valley is concerned, the situation is very normal. Uh, and also their peace and prosperity both are there. In fact, uh, in last about uh, two, three years, uh, the tourism has come on the record time. And uh, there are only 40 to 50 residual terrorists left. And that is the cause. Once that you find that Kashmir Valley, the terrorists have totally been eliminated. They want to activate this Rajori Punch area so that they can now infiltrate through this area, cross Peer Punjab and go to South Kashmir. This is a new route which they are trying to find out because what is happening as far as uh, in Kashmir Valley is concerned, uh, the route one in winter due to heavy snowfall, the passes get closed. The second thing is our counter infiltration grid is very robust. And no infiltration is able to succeed there. And uh, especially the leadership of Hizbul Mujahideen in Laskare Toba and uh, Jesse Mohammed has been eliminated. So they are on the run in Kashmir Valley. They are only now doing hybrid warfare and target killing. And as on today, we find the situation in Kashmir Valley is totally peaceful. In fact, the development which is taking place is a matter of pride. The stone throwing is almost uh, nil now. The radicalization which was in South Kashmir has reduced to quite a bit level. There are IM medical college, engineering degree college which has come. The, the uh, railway line now which is starting from Udampur coming up to Baramulla is totally operationalized and finally it will even go up to Kutpala. So overall situation in Kashmir Valley is very, very peaceful. The cause of concern is now the Punch Rajori area which is a forested belt here, two, three things stand out. One is it is high mountain and covered with thick forest up to the line of control and number of forests which adjoin each other. And there are natural caves which gives uh, opportunity to the terrorists to uh, hide out in jungles for a long time. Earlier, they used to be dependent on their logistic sustenance in the villager, which they are doing uh, not doing now. They are uh, basically stalking uh, their uh, day-to-day -day need including weapon and ammunition in in the cave itself there are about 20 to 30 terrorists which are foreign terrorists armed with the m4 weapon which was american weapon left by americans in afghanistan they are equipped and they are hardcore they have possibly already infiltrated and they are in the jungle and this is a cause of concern how to eliminate these 25 to 30 uh, foreign terrorists they have changed their strategy also the point today is that one, they are only operating in jungle. They are not coming in, in, in the rural area so that 
they invite you to come in jungles where they possibly have some sort of advantage. And the strategy which are changed by Pakistan to now pump in number of terrorists from Razori Punch area by activating also the post where it has happened in Akrur, it has also ha happened in uh, Rajori area and Punch area. So now India also need to change the tactics. We have to be proactive, not reactive. Uh, this is what is happening as on today. Um, we are reacting to what Pakistan is doing. We know where these terrorists are stationed. They are on the launch pad. We know there are 17 launch pads opposite to Punt Rajori and Akhrun area. We should target them. We have a capability now in terms of missile, drones, as well as we have got now Rafale with scalp missile that without crossing, we can now strike them. We need to strike them. We need to punish Pakistan army. Until as we don't do it, you will find it as the election time will be coming in another three, four months, you will find this activity increasing. It put you on a back foot. And therefore, the, it is a requirement that you punish Pakistan army, which is a preparators, which are doing. Earlier, we used to punish their post, which used to help in infiltration by uh, basically firing from all uh, the post and eliminating that Pakistani post. I suppose that sort of punishment also need to be done. So overall, it looks to me the situation will now come to normal after some time, but we have to work hard and we have to now punish Pakistan uh, army. Now, as far as this operation concerned, I only feel two, three mistakes possibly, which I can uh, point out. One is why the road opening was not done uh, on the uh, uh, basically route, which was now followed by this reinforcement, which was uh, current, coming to basically uh, operation area. The second thing is uh, the vehicles should be which are bulletproof. Caspier could have been used. Why that they have not used? Third thing is that we have, they have got complete intelligence about our movement there. It means there are a lot of uh, OGW and sleeper cell functioning in this population, which was not happening earlier because this population is pro-India, nationalist, and number of people from Rajori Puncha are in Indian Army, especially home and art uh, of a territorial um, army. So uh, this we need to now guard, I suppose, Overall, we have to change our strategy of proactive and now strike uh, where it hurts them maximum to Pakistan army rather than uh, doing uh, action which is reaction in, in nature. Uday. All right, uh, absolutely. Uh, let me uh, quickly bring in, in fact, uh, at this point, uh, uh, Major General Sudhakar ji as well. Major General Sudhakar ji, uh, the nation, of course, uh, remembering the brave hearts. Today, the wreathling ceremony took place. Uh, but another day and another terror incident in uh, in uh, the Union Territory, sir. Yeah, uh, good evening. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. And uh, must compliment the previous co-panelists for having covered the thing in a very comprehensive manner. Well, uh, <clears throat> this narrative is going to correspond and also continue in the same manner. There will be selective killing. There will be ambushes, as I foresee. And because uh, the Pakistan and China both have been put into a defensive state or defensive mode. Neither of them are in a position to take any kind of offensive. If offensive, it is going to be in hybrid form. And this is what the hybrid form means. Also, punctuated with these kind of terrorist activities will be cyber attacks, electromagnetic emissions. There will be drone attacks as has happened about 200 nautical miles uh, uh, southwest of Porbandar yesterday, I suppose, on a cargo ship moving from Saudi Arabia uh, bound for Mangalore port. So these things, as I analyze, as I assess, are likely to take place because a Supreme Court of India, having given a final judgment or death knell of Article 370 having been put into a permanent burial, is, is a very strong message to both Pakistan and China. Neither of the two can take it so kindly. One. Secondly, 5th of August 2019 is still ringing in their ears. And uh, they are giving them, um, I, I would say, uh, 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 cold sweat in the winter nights. And third and most important is $62 billion having been committed for the CPEC by China, out of which I am told as per the latest count, 
almost close to 42 billion have been committed on the ground. So, uh, and although Pakistan is unable to pay back uh, by 31st of December, the bottom line payment for debt servicing in terms of interest is minimum $25 billion. And so th this is the reality which is actually in the backdrop of all this is happening. And uh, there is a China hand in behind everything that is happening as per my assessment. It is just the beginning. It's the tip of the iceberg. As I see, it is south of Pir Punjal ranges, close to Punjab state. Punjab and Jammu and Kashmir Union territory as of now, uh, they have a common border. And, uh, uh, and we know the situation in Punjab. We know the Khalistani movement, which has actually been put into a kind of lingering um, fire by Pannu and uh, his accomplices. Uh, so therefore, uh, there is a greater design in the coming winters when we would be getting ready for, for formation, formal integration and promulgation of the statehood status of Jammu and Kashmir. I foresee prior to the election, because Supreme Court has already given a direction that by September, elections have to be held. And before that, the statehood has to be attained. So if, if this is what has to follow in the months of winter, then Rajori and Poon sector terrorist activities have got a lot. It is not messaging. They have got a lot underway going to activate the IB sector as also challenge and threaten the bottleneck, Akhnur bottleneck. So that is one point. Second point I wish to highlight is that all the feeder roads which are coming into the valley floor, valley floor has undergone a transformational change, be it the infrastructure, be it the, the government machinery, be it the tourism, be it the economic development, name anything, be it the IMs and the IITs and uh, the medical fraternity uh, and a host of other issues. Uh, you see, all the feeder connectivity are from the mainland uh, through Jawar Tunnel or Banihal Pass. And Rajori Poonch there onto the south of Pir Panjal range. And as I foresee, as General Sivach has, he's an expert on the subject, he's already uh, indicated that during the winter months, this is going to be an avenue of approach for the terrorists. They may not enter the Kashmir Valley. They may actually adopt hybrid means to activate many other slipper cells. Mind you, in your channel only, sometime back I had given out my assessment that there is also a corridor running parallel to the northern border with China, which may be 50 to 180 kilometers away, connecting uh, the places like Meerut, uh, the western UP, uh, eastern UP, Kishan Ganj of Bihar, going along the, uh, the Siliguri corridor to Dhubri and towards Dibrugod. And this is a corridor which has got, uh, you know, a sizable population of people who are inimical to national interest of India. They are supporting, cohorting with this kind of Al-Qaeda as also ISIS elements. And their main intention is to uh, produce modules, effective modules to carry out and orchestrate successful and effective uh, terrorist activities in coming uh, time uh, till the elections are held in 24. Third and last point I wish to highlight is that, that apart from this, we need to also look at the issue towards the Indian Ocean region. The Indian Ocean region has to be a holistic manner. Let's not look at Rajori in isolation, Lahore in isolation. Uh, there are bigger things happening in Bangladesh. Is Bangladesh is going in for the election the early part of January. We all know how much money China has invested in Bangladesh. The consortium of the stock exchange has since couldn't actually bid the successfully there. And there are a number of military establishments apart from the bridge across the Padma, the railway line, the road, um, six lane roads and the 60 trillion um, metric uh, cubic tons of gas which has been discovered in Bangladesh, which China is eyeing for. They want to lay a pipeline and take it right up to China, Myanmar economic corridor and thereafter to the Yunnan province. So such like the Cuckoo's Island has been modernized. They are developing an LG. They have got a pipeline. They have got uh, 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 the, uh, uh, the optic fiber. They have got the surveillance detachment keeping an eye on all our activities uh, along the eastern coast of India in the Bay of Bengal. So therefore, all I'm saying is that it's about time 
India takes a view at all this, doesn't respond to it in a hasty manner, in a holistic manner, in short term, mid term and long term. And when I'm saying short term, mid term and long term, we need to identify certain activities which can be undertaken by the troops on ground at tactical level. Certain activities can be undertaken at the operational level and certain activities that can be undertaken at the strategic level. All I'm saying is it's time is every time a thing like this takes place, perhaps um, uh, uh, a surgical strike may not be the response. There are other ways to actually bring Pakistan down on the knees. They, as it is there on the knees, but we need to cripple them furthermore. They, we should hit them so hard that they should not be able to get up and, and, and uh, undertake such kind of mission. Last but not the least, we need to close the tap from where the flooding is taking place. The tap, in my opinion, is the ISI headquarters and supported by the China elements. We are aware of the fact that China's civil companies have already established footprints close to Sir Creek, along the, the, the western border, along the IB, at different places. We need to identify, enhance our surveillance capability, and idea is not to strike them, but idea is to cripple them by cyber offensive method, by electronic emission method, by adopting the semi-autonomous or autonomous uh, space uh, platforms like drones, uh, multiple kind of drone system in order to undertake, strike them where it actually hurts the most and thereafter cripple Pakistan and once and for all, for all you know the elections which are around the corner by 8th of February may or may not take place with evolving dynamics. Whether it takes place or not, the outcome is well known. Nawaz Sharif is going to come back to power. Whether it will be good for India or not, time will tell us. But India must remain very, very alert and take a very, very calibrated response, undertake uh, such kind of activities which should not blow out of hand unnecessarily in a critical <coughs> juncture as of now. Back to you then. Group Captain Devnath, uh, come in here uh, on, uh, you know, on, on, on your, of course, tribute to uh, the fallen soldiers, the martyrs who the nation was saluting today. Uh, we saw the wreathling ceremony earlier in the day, but again, uh, you know, Pakistan and their proxy is at work. Uh, a police constable today being being shot. Oh, yes, a uh, classic uh, uh, strike by any terrorist organization is to attack the local police uh, officials, especially when they are off duty hours or local police officials who have retired and who are uh, living a life, uh, living in their quarters and residence happens to be in a normal civilian area. This is a classic pattern in which uh, uh, what we saw in uh, Naxalite areas, what we saw in Chhattisgarh and what we saw in Punjab also. Uh, probably uh, we have to take uh, precautions, the, a totally uh, state subject, the state uh, home departments have to ensure that people, uh, police people who are off duty or who have retired are uh, made to live in an area which is sanitized and uh, which has got some kind of a security being provided by state police. Uh, because uh, such a lone wolf attack by sleeper cells uh, are standard techniques. We have seen this pattern in uh, other countries also. Uh, uh, but beyond this, Uday, I feel that time now has come <coughs> that we pick up this matter with government of Pakistan at highest level. Probably we are uh, using very soft language. The external affairs ministry has to now use a little harsher words while dealing with Pakistan embassy, while dealing with their ambassador in India. Time to call the ambassador, show him, uh, issue him a demarche, uh, ask him some tough questions. Uh, every time these attacks take place, we do prepare a folder giving details and evidence of uh, these terrorists their weapon systems, their ration, their medicine, which are mostly originating in Pakistan. And we went over the dossier to uh, Pakistan embassy. But it appears that they are using our evidence to ensure that next time their ISI or ISI agents do not make the similar mistake. For example, earlier uh, they used to, uh, terrorists used to walk in into Indian territory with biscuit packets in which uh, it was very clear, uh, clearly marked that biscuit manufactured by so-and-so, manufactured by so-and-so factory in Pakistan. Now they have become clever. Now when they pump in, uh, push in uh, pa uh, Pakistan-based terrorists in India, 
very cleverly they are issuing them with biscuits and um, uh, sweets and dry fruits on which packaging a made in india uh, company is there so we have to be one step ahead of pakistan isi uh, lastly uday i want to say that uh, it is a game of uh, who blinks first uh, should we resort to one uri should we resort to one balakot time now has come to give a uh, serious thought for a bala type uh, type of action our intelligence bureau has a uh, raw intelligence bureau um, they have very accurate uh, idea about these um, terrorists their hideouts in pok so probably a node is required uh, at an appropriate time indian army or indian air force should carry out one more surgical strike a little harsh uh, thing to do but probably it will have some good medicinal effect yes uday Yes, uh, let me uh, quickly uh, take that across to Major General Sivaj as well for a quick comment. Major General Sivaj, meanwhile, of course, the search operation continues. Obviously, the terrain is such which is making the, the you know the search a bit more difficult. Uh, but obviously, our alert, our guard needs to be up. We must ensure revenge, retribution uh, for what has taken place in Poonch, isn't it? Absolutely, guys. Oh, there's no doubt about it. First of all, uh, as far as the terrorists which have been now surrounded and boxed in they need to be eliminated we are making full use of drones helicopter and sniffer dog and uh, i am sure okay. in another 3 4 days we'll able to eliminate the 3 to 4 terrorists who were involved in last operation now the point which is coming is see uh, that when uh, 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 americans were in afghanistan there about 3 to 4000 laskare toba jaise mohammed terrorists have gone and fought against the american and the once the american has gone they have come back from uh, afghanistan and they are now equipped with american weapon and they are in pojk irrespective which governments come there in pakistan whether it is of imran khan or nawaz sharif the isi is not going to stop doing this uh, action in india and the point which is there what do they do with these 4 to 5000 laskare to jaise mohammed terrorist they have no other choice but to pump in in india so thinking sometime that the peace is now prevailing in the kashmir valley or in, in the jori punch uh, that nothing will happen i think this is uh, now maybe uh, far fetched thing they are going to pump in the terrorists not only in uh, kashmir but also in uh, punjab uh, with that k to this so we have to be very alert and the china factor also should be taken in you know the point which uh, everyone is trying to convey why have they activated rajouri punch area you see the point a that ki before in last about 8 to 10 years this area has become totally peaceful and it was declared a, as a, a terrorist free area but once the galwan took place uh, number of troops moved from here and taken to eastern ladakh and now those troops are creating problem for uh, for china because china troops are not well motivated whereas indians are more trained highly motivated and therefore it is china which is telling pakistan to activate this area so that india is forced to take out these troops which are deployed in east uh, uh, ladakh back to rajouri punch that is another thing which we need to see and another point which is there is that ki if we have to now uh, respond to what pakistan is doing it has to be a comprehensive plan obviously it has to be a long term short term and also a tactical and strategical but certainly we cannot close our eyes you cannot leave pakistan unpunished otherwise this area will become a more active and especially when general elections are going to take place in april may in india also uh, um, election has to take place in jnk before september uh, next year we have to be very careful that uh, law and order situation remain intact now in case such action such operation do take place where pakistan keep on uh, managing to pump in more terrorists this will be not to our interest i suppose the time has come we have to have a proactive strategy both in kashmir valley as well as also in in punch rajouri it has to be a coordinated effort and we have to hurt pakistan army and pakistan isi remember that they have got almost 4 to 5000 uh, laskar e toba jaise mohammed terrorists which are in pojk and which in time to come pakistan will like to pump in india for more such videos subscribe to the newsx youtube channel hit the bell icon